All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your very first online class uh, for social studies. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to cover at the very beginning. It's, go it's all going to be tied in some way or form to what we're talking about in class. But I really want to target some very specific things that what we have on the GED test. So one thing I always see people struggling with is maps, how to read them. There's all different types. What should I do? So I have a PowerPoint that we're going to go over. Uh, and hopefully this helps you out. I am going to have a quiz and uh, some other additional information, I believe, on the Moodle website that you, I think you found this from. But let's go on to our very first slide. So, oh, I can't tell. I think I might be covering up some of the continents. Uh, but we have the seven continents on this map. Uh, it is North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. But the other thing I'd like for you to notice is the, uh, the map itself. So what we have, the very first thing that you should look at is the title of the map. We have continents of the world as our title. Okay, So you have an understanding that that is the emphasis of this map. We also have our compass rows, okay? So our compass rows right down here, I'm circling it with my cursor, is your compass with north, south, east, and west measurements. Always, always find those two things on your map before proceeding. You need to know what they're talking about or what the focus of the map is, and your compass rows to make sure that directions are in the correct way, okay? Uh, another thing is they are also labeling the oceans. So you have your Pacific Ocean, your Arctic Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian, and Pacific over there. Okay. Uh, another little just interesting fun fact is we see that Australia is the only country that is also its entire own continent. Oh, never mind. Hang on. Uh, we have the, I think that's the New Zealand Islands over there, so that does not count as, it's part of the Australian continent, though, either way. So, ah, we will get on to other parts. This map, right away, so what is the title? So the title, Annual Rainfall in Australia, but it's usually found near the top. I have seen it before on certain types of maps where it is on the bottom or right above the key, uh, definitely just keep a lookout for that title. Okay. Uh, yet again, compass rows right here are different symbols. Okay. So we have all different types of symbols here all over the page. Capital city, different cities, different symbols for those cities. Uh, the legend. Okay, so this is really getting into what this map is describing. Uh, the different colors, it is that we know from the label that it's the annual rainfall in Australia, but over here it describes the colors and it has blue as over 40 centimeters or 40 inches, oh man, 100 centimeters, uh, 20 to 40 inches as lighter blue, 10 to 29 as green and yellow is 10 inches or less of rainfall, okay? So just by looking at this map, we can tell that the middle or the central area of Australia is getting less than 10, centi or 10 inches of rain, okay? Less than 25 centimeters of rain per year. Uh, very, very dry, which that is, yeah, that is true. The other thing that I wanted to note that I didn't note in the prior map is that on both of these maps, we have lines of longitude and lines of latitude, okay? This is very important when measuring between places. Uh, in fact, when you use your Google Maps on your phone, uh, it is using lines of longitude and lines of long uh, longitude and latitude to tell you or to tell the satellites where you're at, where you're going, and how you're going to get there. So these are very, very important bits of information. Uh, the very last thing on our list, just to, as we're skimming through this map, is the legend, okay? 
So over here, this entire thing, or oh, sorry, is the scale. I had legend on my brain. But right over here, the scale is right below Australia. Okay, so here it is going to describe to you in the frame of reference of the map, or relative to the size of the map, the distances, okay? So from zero to here, that's 500 miles. From there to there, that's another 500, but that entire length would be 1,000 miles. So you can roughly measure across Australia by using the scale, okay? Where did my cursor go? There it is. So from here to about there is about a thousand miles. And from there to about right there is about a thousand miles. And from there to there, I'd say Australia is roughly 2,400 miles across to 2,300 miles across. And I can tell that just from looking at this map, okay? Let's move on to the next thing. So, very important part of reading maps is your latitude and your longitude, like what I was just saying, because that tells you your location. And we use two things for reference on that. I know it's impossible to actually see on this map, and I do apologize, but uh, the two most important lines on a globe uh, are your prime meridian and your equator. Okay. We will get in farther into that, but I do still want to do a little bit of analysis of this map. What we have is degrees, okay? So it's 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60, and 70. And it repeats as you're going down this way. As you're going up over here, 90, 105, 120, 135, 150, 165, and so on. Uh, degrees it's measured in degrees like the bigger the lines are it's like a line is one degree okay uh, but let me see this map kind of is doing it in a very different way yeah so from here to here it's five degrees right oh 15 sorry so from 75 to 60 degrees you have a 15 degree gap 15 degree gap 15 and so on because when you think about your globe right your globe if you were looking at a globe from the side what is it it's a circle okay a circle as you're going around it what is what is it called when you make an entire circle right when you go around the entire way 360 degrees right uh so 15 degree differences all the way down on our uh, lines of latitude that eventually will turn into is 360 degrees but you get so far and then it kind of changes it changes the direction okay so right in this area you are 15 degrees north okay so that line is 15 degrees north and I don't have to say anything else but it's 15 degrees north of the equator okay the equator is our zero line when it comes to our lines of latitude. When you are right here, kind of near South Africa, you are 15 degrees east of the prime meridian, okay? That is a line of longitude. Let's go into the actual definitions. I'd like for you guys to write these down. It's good to keep this bit of information. You'll never know when you need it. and most likely it is going to be on the GED. So, latitude. What is it? It's the distance from north or south pole. These lines, well, this is actually a really bad description. I am very sorry. It's the distance from the equator, okay? It's not the distance from the north or south pole, but they tend to either, they tend to uh, go towards those two lines, okay? Uh, the equator, what is it? The central line of latitude, the halfway point from the north to the south pole. Longitude, uh, very interesting, but uh, longitude was recently created. I would say in the last, like it's within the last several hundred years, uh, a couple hundred years that we started to really establish longitude. Uh, 
distance from the prime meridian. These lines run from top to bottom on the map vertically, okay? The prime meridian, the central line of longitude, it runs through Greenwich, England. So very, very interesting bit. Whoever knows, you never know. You might need that bit of information for if you're on, gonna be on who wants to be a millionaire or something. So another part that I wanna talk about is hemispheres, okay? So we are in the Northern hemisphere. So if you look at this little series of maps over here, it does show the different hemispheres. Hemi itself is the Latin word for half sphere. We know what sphere is, okay? So I'm literally saying half sphere, northern half sphere, southern half sphere. So when you look at this northern half sphere, you cut the planet in half at uh, the equator. The top part is the northern, the bottom part is the southern. Western, you cut the planet in half at the prime meridian. Left half is the western hemisphere, right half is the uh, eastern hemisphere, okay? They do go on to kind of show you a little bit more about those longitude lines and the latitude lines. Um, one thing to kind of note is it is kind of interesting um, with how spheres work, right? Is imagine, I'd like for you to do this little mental experiment for me. Imagine you are at the North Pole, okay? And you walk 15 miles north, okay? How can you do that? You can't, okay. But let's imagine that you walk 15 miles south from the North Pole, and then you walk 15 miles east, and then you walk another 15 miles north. If you were to think about the shape of that, it would just be like a square, like half of a square type of shape, right? However, because you are on a sphere, like you would technically be right around the same location that you started in uh, because of it coming to that point at the top of the sphere, okay? All right, fun little thing. Also take note, this series of maps, it does have a title. It is the geographic grid. There is no compass rose, but that is because we are looking at the entire entirety of the planet we're analyzing it okay we're we're cutting it in half you know we're already using kind of directions in that sense um oops i guess we're going to move on to the next map so these are it's called thematic map uh, and i just want us to do some group analysis on this i will post all of these maps up on the website uh but Let's just kind of go through this a little bit. This is the unemployment rate from this last April, 2020. Okay, so that's the title of this map. It has different colors. Here's our legend over here, okay? We can look at this legend and see that blue represents a 9% unemployment rate. All the way down to red represents a 24% unemployment rate. They even start to go into analysis of closer things. But when we look at this map, it is a map of New York State, county by county, okay? So what we can say from looking at this map is that this county over here that is red is a 24% unemployment rate versus just a little bit to the east, right there, has a 16% unemployment rate. Um, one thing I'd like to know, or actually I'd like you guys to know, take a second, what is missing from this map? There's a several things, but I'd like for you to kind of pause the video, tell me what you think it is. All right, so first thing, there is no compass rose. There is, however, uh, a legend and the title and a label right? Technically, labels. Um, there is no scale, though, okay? So it's not asking you anything about the size or anything like that. But let's look at another several maps. We're only going to take a little bit longer. 
Oh, this map is very low quality, but it is the global population density in 1994. Title, right? Uh, it is really hard to see, but uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, I think it is saying persons per kilometer, okay, or people per kilometer down as their legend, okay. <coughs> but it does have lines of long, longitude and latitude. Uh, different colors represent the different amounts of people per kilometer. So as you can see, China, incredibly dense population. India or northern India, incredibly dense population. Right around Germany, there's some very, very, very tiny areas, but they have some high population places. And then when you look at the United States, it's the coastal areas, and then it definitely goes down. The density does go down. Uh, there's just so much information that you can pack into a single map that it would take pages and pages and pages of reading to actually get the equivalent amount of information out of them. So maps are a tool that you should use. Try to get better at it. Check it out. This map does have our scale. So we could measure our distances if we wanted to. However, I am having problems seeing if there is a compass rose. So I don't believe there is. I think we'll do one more and then we will call it good after this one. Uh, this is just the migration of a monarch butterfly. Okay, so right down here, monarch butterflies, fall and spring migrations. And this map is really nice because it's so, it's kind of different than your standard map, okay? But take note, pause, and note what this map has and what it doesn't have, okay? Because there's a few things. So pause the video right now. All right, so I hope that you guys notice that there is no scale, okay? There is a compass rose. It is the very, very simplified compass rose right down here, uh, just showing your north direction. And it does have your label or your title. It has different labels, winter, winter, summer, corn belt, summer. So different labels to just feed you, feed more information into you, okay? Because it does show the migration of monarch butterflies it is different depending on the location of the monarch butterflies. All right. As you can see from this, they, the butterflies in Idaho actually go down to California for the summer. Or for the winter. Wait a second. Yeah, that makes sense. And they go up to uh, California or up to Idaho for the summer, okay? Very interesting, a lot of information. I'm gonna post, a few, there's a few of them that I'm not going over in this, that I am going to post up on the Moodle website, and I would like for you guys to take a look at those. I might even have a quiz on some of this information, so I hope that you took notes. If you didn't, you might have to watch the video again. But, hope you guys have a good day. Thank you for watching.